Hello everyone and welcome to Spot. In the Diablo lore it says that both the barbarians and the druids are descendants of Boo Kettles and their his children and that's quite interesting. There's also a unique item within the game which uh, happens to prove that and that of course is the Wolf Howl Fury Visor. In itself, this is extremely unique item, and it's somewhat rare as well. And basically, it gives you the perk of turning a barbarian class into a shape-shifting werewolf form. And that's extremely cool in its own, and basically it further boosts already strong uh, barbarian class. So, in this video we're gonna have a look over the wolf bar. Starting up with the distribution points, uh, we are level 88 and we've got a base value of 90 strength, following with uh, 110 dexterity and the rest of the stat points goes into vitality to maximize our life pool. The Barbarian class is one that uh, benefits from vitality stats extremely well, it gets uh, 4 points of HP per 1 point of vitality stat and that's a very well reward. So. Um, Naturally, this character is gonna come with a lot of life. As you can see, straight off the bat, we got a pretty high defense as well as a maxed out resistance pool. So, now let's have a deeper look into the advanced stats page. Here, things are getting much prettier as we've got 35% of damage reduction, 9% life stolen per hit. 7% experience gained, uh, knife life after each kill, 8 to light radius, 70% increased attack speed, 60% increased run walk, 40% faster hit recovery, 35% faster block rate, attackers take damage of 40, 68% chance of open wounds, 63% chance of crushing blow, 15% chance of deadly strike, 26 to lightning absorb, cold absorb 40%, cannot be frozen and minus 20% slower stamina drain. So that's about the advanced stats page and now let's discuss the skill tree of this character because it's somewhat unique compared to the rest of the builds which the Barbarian can offer. Starting up with the combat masteries, I'd say it's the most important part of this whole build. In here we've got a single point into increased stamina. Then we've got a single point into increased speed. We've got a maxed out mace mastery because uh, our weapon of choice is a mace class. So as you can see, the mace mastery provides us with an uh, attack rating of 224%, damage 143%, and the sweetest of all is the 30% chance of critical strike. If we combine that uh, with the 15% chance of deadly strike we've got, this means we've got 45% chance in total to deal a double damage attack whenever we land a strike, and that's a pretty good. So let's uh, move over the War Christ page. In here we've got 1 into Hole, 20 into Shout, it's a maxed out skill. We've also maxed out uh, Battle Orders and we've got 1 into Battle Command. Now, over the combat skills uh, page, we've got absolutely nothing, so that's about the skill tree. Now, let's uh, talk about the gear and the charms. So, what we've got, starting with uh, our helm, which I've already shown, that's a pretty interesting helm. So, it gives 3 to War Cries, 4 to Feral Rage, 6 to Lycanthropy, 6 to Werewolf, as those are all varying stats, so... This one primarily is extremely good roll. There's also a 10 to strength, uh, 9 to dexterity, 12 to vitality, and level 15 summon dire wolf charges coming from this helm. So, as you can see, this one hasn't been socked yet. Uh, in terms of socketing options, I'd probably prefer to put some very good uh, rare jewel or probably burr rune, maybe as an alternative. As a armor piece, I'd say the best in slot is gonna be the Duress armor. This one specifically is uh, very well rolled as well, you can see 18% enhanced damage. Uh, massive amounts of uh, cold damage coming from this piece of gear as well, 15% chance of crushing blow, 33% chance of open wounds, 
and a fair bit of all resistances, so pretty good on the defense side as well, as you can see. Now, the belt we're using is the Thunder's Gold Vigor. This is extremely beneficial belt for its uh, maximum to lightning resist, coupled with the lightning absorb. There's also a pretty huge stat boots uh, coming from the 22 strength and 22 vitality, so a uh, really awesome belt. The boots are the Gore Riders. These are, I'd say, the best in slot for a melee character. They provide with 30% increased uh, faster run walk, 15% chance of crushing blow, 15% deadly strike, and 10% chance of open wounds. So the gloves now are Draco's Grasp. These ones are granting us uh, extremely high survivability with the naturally coming life tap on striking. There's a 5% chance to proc that and there's also a 9% life stolen per hit on this one specifically. It can roll up to 10%. There's also a 25% chance of open wounds, 14 to strength and 9 life after each kill. These ones as well can spawn with up to 15 strength, so that's about that. Now let's uh, talk about the shield. So the shield of choice is the Storm Shield Monarch Shield. This one is uh, notorious amongst the Diablo community for uh, well-known reasons. It comes with uh, damage reduced by 35%, which is pretty huge amount. As well as a really high amount of chance to block, as you can see 72% coming on this shield. There's also a 35% faster block rate option, which is uh, happened to be very effective. 32 strength bonus and this one's also been socked with a perfect diamond gem just to get the additional hint of all resistances. Now let's talk about the jewelry. So the first ring which I'm using is a Raven Frost uh, with 22 dexterity and uh, quite nice roll on the attack rating as well. This one is definitely needed for the cannot be frozen mode and you can also benefit quite dramatically from the cold damage absorb. That's the reason why I'm actually wearing two of these, so I've got uh, another one with 22 dexterity, unfortunately this one rolled uh, almost anti-perfect on the attack rating, but nevertheless it's a Raven Frost, granting us another 20% uh, cold damage absorb, so in total we've got 40% cold damage absorb, so that's a massive amount of cold damage that's been negated by just wearing those two rings together. The amulet of choice is the Cat's Eye, and this one is benefiting us extremely well, with the added 30% faster on Woke, uh, we start uh, running extremely quick. There's also a 20% increased attack speed option, which we don't benefit from in a shape-shifting form. But there's also 100 to defense, and 100 defense versus missiles, and 25 to dexterity, which uh, those stats are benefiting both the survivability and the attack rating of this character. So I'd say this probably is the best in slot amulet for this whole setup. And this thing brings us to the weapon of choice, and that's gonna be the Stormlash Scourge. This is a somewhat uh, rare weapon, and if you don't happen to have it, I'd say alternative for it is gonna be the full open socket Grizzward uh, weapon, socked with shell runes just to get additional attack rating, and this is the only way to increase your actual attack rating in a shape-shifting form. Basically, you only benefit from the attack uh, Sorry, attack speed I meant on the weapon itself, if you happen to have attack speed on other pieces and you're in a shape-shifting form, you don't really benefit from them, as uh, the attack uh, speed bonus from the amulet, as I've already said. So, on weapon switch, uh, we've got two spirit swords, just to maximize the battle order's effect with the additional 2-2-0 skills. In terms of charms, we've got the uh, Hellfire Torch, Barbarian Charm and also a Nicholas Charm. The rest of the inventory is uh, pretty simple. As much as you can get, uh, maximum damage with uh, attack rating and life charms, things like that. These are benefiting you extremely well. The alternative side say are gonna be War Cry's charms with uh, life. These are gonna increase your life pool dramatically. So that's about uh, our setup, now let's uh, quickly talk about the mercenary. So we've got the uh, Act 5 mercenary equipped with a uh, Nightwing Veil helmet. This might seem a bit odd to you, but um, if you see the weapon choice, so this whole thing is gonna clear. So the armor he's using is a uh, Leviathan Kraken Shell, soaked with Tau, uh, just to increase his poison resist. Uh, there's some pretty buggy poison damages going on in the game around, you probably know what I mean, so I don't want my mercenary dying from that. 
This is also a very good uh, item in terms of survivability. It offers really high amounts of defense as well as damage reduction, as you can see, 24% coming on this piece. And now the weapons uh, which my friends mercenary are using are two Voice of Reason swords, which are granting him pretty high amount of uh, Frozen Orb and Ice Blast procs, as well as uh, pretty good uh, damage to both Undead and Demons. So the mercenary in itself is extremely strong, whenever I buff myself and him with battle orders and shout, he gets extremely tanky, so we don't really need uh, any life leech on his gear, simply because I also happen to cast life tap uh, pretty often and he benefits from that as well. Now let's uh, have a look over his advanced stats page, so he's got 24% uh, of damage reduction, 150% extra gold from monsters, half freeze duration, 271% damage to demons, 361% damage to undead, 5 coat absorb cannot be frozen, minus uh, 48 to enemy coat resistance and plus 8 to cold skill damage and um, those two last options are working extremely well with uh, his uh, frozen orb and uh, ice blast procs. So he's dealing uh, really good amounts of AoE damage and that's a uh, pretty good crowd control as he's also happened to freeze those enemies. So that's about the mercenary setup. Now let's uh, talk about this uh, whole gameplay style. So it's uh, pretty simple actually. In terms of uh, content which you can do, this is extremely strong character and basically you can do it all. You can do absolutely everything you can want and you can imagine with this setup. And uh, the Storm Lash also provides us with a decent amount of AOE effect. So now let's have a look over the character once we got him buffed up and ready for a fight. So we are on health difficulty. Let's uh, start with uh, pre-buffing with our battle command, shout and battle orders. So as you can see our defense went uh, significantly up as well as our life. Our mercenary is extremely stronger now. He got uh, almost 25k defense, so he barely does get hit, and he doesn't really need uh, to have any life leech, as I've already said. Now, let's uh, transform us into our werewolf form, and we've got uh, slightly over 11k of attack rating with the Feral Rage skill, and this is uh, pretty good on health difficulty. This is granting us very high percent chance to hit and basically we don't really miss that often. So straight off the bat we've al already procced a few life tap curses and you can see we're so quick and so deadly. Now once we are all charged up with the Feral Rage and we're already buffed up with our shout and etc. Let's have another look over the advanced stats page and as you can see now we've got 35, uh, sorry, 33% life stolen per hit which is absolutely massive. Combining that with our super high damage output and this is granting us uh, pretty much perfect survivability. Our resistances are maxed up, our chance to block is maxed up, our defense is extremely high so we barely ever got hit. We've also proking uh, life tap curse pretty frequently, which uh, grants uh, survivability for our mercenary as well. Our damage output is through the roof, basically. We're hitting with uh, all kind of sweet stuff like uh, crushing blow, pretty high amount for that, pretty high amount for open wounds, as well as deadly strike and double damage from our mace mastery. So we've also got uh, Nice casts of level 18 Tornado and level 10 Static Field, which are basically a pretty good AoE effect, so we're not only a single targeting attacks, but we also do AoE damage as well. So as you can see, we're proking super frequently everything. Now we also happen to run extremely fast, and yeah, this is a basically super strong character. He is performing very well in PvP as well, I've been having a blast playing him. This is a very well known build among the old school players, uh, this build has been out for a long time, I've been having a really funny moments uh, playing him on the old school 
Diablo 2 and basically, as I've already said, super strong, super powerful build. Somewhat funny as well, and now with the addition of the new mercenary types, you can further experiment with those mercenaries and this uh, Frozen Orb and Ice Blast mercenary happen to be also pretty effective, so that's gonna be it for this video guys, I hope you liked it, I hope it's been interesting and helpful for you, please click on the like button, maybe share a comment of your stories with this uh, setup and build. And I'll see you later in the next one. Bye!